the question was, how do you disentangle risk from uncertainty? Uh, risk, risk and uncertainty are uh, are two different things. And one of the things that works to the advantage of investors is that markets hate uncertainty. So markets will really punish companies uh, which have uncertain uh, outcomes. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's always fun to play uh, these uh, uncertainty games. So let us let me give you a, a real example, uh, which is in my portfolio right now. So uh, there's a there's a company called uh, WL Ross and Company. The ticker is WLRH, and uh, it was it was set up by Wilbur Ross, and it's a blank check uh, 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 SPAC company, basically where they raise about 500 million, and pretty much all the cash is sitting there, and um, and they have to do a deal in a couple of years. And if they don't do a deal in a couple of years, then the cash comes back to investors. And uh, so, in fact, the unusual thing about the Wilbur Ross company is that even the investment banker underwriting fees get refunded in the event the money is sent back. So, you know, the, the guys who did the all the work for the IPO and such, most of that would come back too. So basically, you know, the company has pretty much $10 a share in cash and uh, the stock is at $10. And in fact, when we bought it, uh, we bought it anytime it went below $10. Uh, in fact, we usually bought it below $9.97 so that even with commissions, we were below $10. And uh, so we were buying a dollar bill for slightly less than a dollar bill. Uh, in that case, and Wilbur Ross is a tremendous value investor. Uh, he's, uh, you know, I would say deep distressed value, and so the uncertainty in that in that stock is we have no idea what business uh, Wilbur Ross will invest in, or what industry he will invest in, or what the economics of their investment will be. We also don't know whether he's going to fail to make the investment, in which case the money comes back to us. And so uh, there's a, a lot of uncertainty in that stock. But when you look at risk, uh, the risk is for the most part non-existent. Today, there isn't much risk because you've got cash against what you paid. And how would you lose money? Well, you would lose money if Wilbur made an investment that ended up being a bonehead investment uh, where it, it turned out to be terrible. And the batting average of Wilbur Ross is so good that I would say that the odds that you have a significant permanent loss of capital in an investment that he would make is very low. And there's another ticker with the same stock, which is WLRHU, which is gives you a share of the stock and also gives you the option to buy another half share, I think at at like the equivalent of eleven dollars a share or something. So that has a, a kicker in it as well. So this is an example of uh, risk being low, uncertainty being high, and markets not liking that. Right? Uh, there was another company I had invested in uh, a long time back. In fact, this was the first investment. I made uh, when we first started Pabrai Funds in July 99, and uh, it was called Silicon Valley Bank. And uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, was, uh, it still is a, a bank in, the, in Silicon Valley, very well-run bank um, that mainly makes uh, kind of asset-backed loans to venture-backed companies. But well, the unusual thing about them is that usually when they make those loans, uh, they also get warrants attached uh, to those loans. So, you know, in um, in Silicon Valley, if you're if you're a masseuse at uh, Google, you're going to get stock options. And uh, so nobody nobody raises any eyebrows when your banker says, "Hey, I made you a loan. Uh, can you give me some stock options?" And even the waiter at Il Forneo thinks he should get his tip in stock options. And um, 
So, so they, they had in July of 99, hundreds of stock options and hundreds of these dot coms, and they had no disclosure around those. Now, the bank was profitable and doing well, assuming those warrants were worth zero. And in the valuation that was being given to the bank, there was really no value being ascribed to those warrants. People didn't know which companies they had. They didn't know how much they had. Uh, and they didn't know what the strike prices were. There was no disclosure. But the idea is that it was all above zero. You know, the lowest price it could be is zero. And the odds were pretty high with this huge bubble that was being fueled. I was looking for a way at that time in 99 to get the upside with the with the bubble without the downside. And what a beautiful way to play that bubble with Silicon Valley Bank, where you get the base bank, which is solid, and then you have this, you know, uh, un unknown moonshot applied to it. And uh, I think we had a three or four X in Silicon Valley Bank in the in a year that we held it. And what happened is a few months after I bought, the bank started to realize that they had, you know, gobs of assets in these warrants. And I think those those sedate bankers probably. Uh, decided that they didn't like to see all that sitting there illiquid. So as soon as they were able to, when these companies went public, whatever, they started unloading uh, those warrants. And as they unloaded, that started to hit the income statement. And as it started to hit the income statement and they started to give disclosures, the stock started to react and such. So that was another example of upside without downside, where you uh, go with uncertainty and um, and uh, and risk uh, risk was low there. Risk is low with WLRH, and uncertainty is high. It's a it's a good uh, uh, arrow to have in your quiver.